and gals, uh, this is Ben with Mid Coast Maine, and I'm going to go over a few tools and items that most beginners probably feel either A, they need to have right away, or maybe they need to purchase, they're not real sure. Uh, price is always being a constraint, and so isn't the availability, especially with today's day and age. And You see a lot of YouTube videos out there, just like me. I've seen them all, the different commercials, the product reviews. And so I'm just going to wash that to the side. And I'm just going to say, I want to, I want you to be able to put yourself into my shoes and go, okay, I see these items. I want to get into assembling or some people call building an AR platform. What exactly is it that I need or should have versus what is right, expensive, is the armor's wrench. Now, the Armor's Wrench, for example, that I have is a UTG brand. This was fairly inexpensive. It was one of the brands out there at my local gun store, and so I purchased it. Now, pros and cons. Pro, readily available, um, not as expensive as it should be, but here's a con for you. It doesn't fit all. It doesn't fit all. The UTG brand, there's some play in it. There's some slack in it, and I found that out after assembling probably about the second or third AR I helped assemble with. When it comes to putting on the castle nut slash extension, buffer extension tube, these three teeth here don't always line up and don't always grab. So look for something with a little bit more grab on the end. I almost stripped out the one for my LaRue lower. As you also know, some brands actually need their own type of barrel nut to hold in place. This is more for a D-ring style barrel nut. And so I have to apply a certain angle or pressure to it and hope that these three teeth don't slip. If you were going to get a Geisley lower and upper, as you know, that they have their own particular barrel nut wrench that you have to purchase from them or purchase online. And... They made it specifically for their uh, weapon system, and so it's not going to fail. I want you to keep in mind that it's purpose-driven. If you're doing a budget build or uh, an inexpensive build, would this work for you? Most definitely work. I can speak and tell you this works for Anderson. This works for Arrow, no problem. A couple of the other ones, though, it didn't quite fit, not to mention the fancier you get. Also keep in mind that this is useless on a final product if you don't have the right torque wrench. And before you start talking about, oh well, the set deal, a set price torque wrench, I can promise you this. Hands down, without fail, you don't need to purchase a torque wrench online. You need to weigh the differences and weigh the packaging, handling, deals, because you can go down to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, um, any hardware store in, in your vicinity or big box store and you could purchase a torque wrench. Keep in mind, torque wrench needs to have the particular size for it and also you need a variance between 40 and 80. I mean, do you hear 40 and 80 pounds? That's a wide spread. You don't need to get fancy. So the first thing I would tell you about this wrench right here is if you get a uh, bottom end or inexpensive armor's wrench, keep in mind what you're asking it to do and what you're working on to begin with. Will this do the flash suppressor? Sure. Will this do the barrel nut? Sure. Will this do the castle nut and tube extension? Sure. Could you have some troubles with this not lining up? Yes. This didn't line up with my Fortis. Had a really difficult time with that one. Maybe that's just me. I'm not a pro, but I'm just turning things into a layman's terms on what would make sense for you. The next thing that everybody should be thinking about having um, that works is this right here they call an armorer's block. It has various cutouts to hold certain items. I'm not going to sell it to you. There's plenty of videos out there that will describe a real Advids Armors block. This is the one I chose. This is the one they had available that I could pick up in the immediate use. Are there better things out there? Sure. Are there... Do you need this? No, you don't. If you're ingenuitive and careful, you can do a lot of things with vice and a soft landing and careful tools. Sure. 
Is this great to have? Is it a time saver? Most definitely. A lot of uses to it. Brunel's makes one. Wheeler makes one. Real Avid makes one. Uh, several companies out there themselves specialize in making these. So make sure you shop around. Make sure you shop around and obviously for availability purposes. Will they all do the same thing? Yes. Here's the con I'm going to tell you. Here's the con that I've always found to be a problem with. If I'm saving money and I am just going to purchase a barrel, uh, excuse me, a charging handle extension latch that helps me grab the charging handle a lot easier. For example, in this case here, I have a Badger extension that I want to add to it so I can grab the standard AR charging handle that I've been used to. Now, does this help you punch out the roll pins? It most certainly does. It fits right there. But the problem you're going to have in all of the blocks that I've found in research, if anybody's out there that have found something different, let me know. There is a, there is a spring in here, and that spring compresses to hold the latch in place. Now, if you're trying to pound that in place and keep that spring compressed, you're going to have to find a secondary tool. A lot of people use a thumb clip or paper clip or whatnot and hold it in place. Even that, is still, it still only allows you to have one hand available to pound it in and a little bit of praying and a little bit of moving around. Me personally, I wish they would make an armorer's block attachment or addition that allows you to hold this in place aligned while you are adding the barrel extension. Hey, I'm not perfect. A lot of people aren't out there. Just remember, if you are going to just buy the 4 or $8 extra piece for your standard uh, charging handle that came with your firearm, keep that in mind. Look at some videos, plenty of tutorials out there, plenty of shortcuts out there. But keep that in mind if that's what you had, if that's what your intentions are later on. And most likely if you're going to put optics on your firearm, you're going to want an extension. Or if you're in cold weather like I am up here in Maine and you, you wear a lot of gloves or so forth, that will come in handy. Is it needed? No. It's not needed. It's one of those things that you'll find you'll like to help and get things going. The other thing I want to talk about is for your upper receiver. Your upper receiver has a clam. They call this a clam shell. I got this on sale. I did not go out of my way to purchase this. It was on sale. It was from Brunel's and I had a really good discount. This holds your upper receiver in place while you're working on it. Fits right in there. The detent works. It goes right into place. There's only so many ways it can go in. It's self-explanatory. It closes, locks in on it sets it in your vise. Here's the problem. Do not count on this for a whole lot of pressure retention because there are many, many videos out there from really good armorers who will tell you and how will show you that if you use this to rely on a seized barrel nut that you risk ripping out the edges or deforming your upper receiver. What you need is what they call an extension rod. Geisley seems like they make a good one. Real Advid, they say, make a good one less expensive. Remember, you're going to get what you paid for. But if you have a tough barrel, a tough nut to crack, as they say, this would not be the tool I would reach for. I would reach for the extension rod that locks right into the barrel lugs. That will guarantee you to not be able to deform your upper receiver if that means that much to you. And, well, that's up to you. And other tools that you've over that you're probably going to want to have on hand and you don't necessarily need to buy are something like this. Now, I'm not talking about your optics and small items that you get. For obvious reasons, they come with their own little Allen keys and Allen wrenches. And after a while, you'll have a huge collection of these. Uh, make no mistake. Now, I went down to Tractor Supply. Um, could I have gone to Harbor Freight? Sure. But Tractor Supply had on sale a set of three very long handle and that long handle is so that I can reach into the pistol grip and turn the screw. Some of the pistol grip screws you'll find are flathead, some are Phillips, some are torque or T. Really depends on the maker and the model. 
one size does not fit all in that aspect, but you probably already have these sitting somewhere in your toolbox or on your workbench. You're going to need those, but you don't need to buy them if you already have them. Another thing I want to bring to your attention is this is a Wheeler fat wrench. What this does is it applies the right amount of torque. I know there's a lot of mechanics out there and there's a lot of people with a lot of experience that they just know the torque feel. I got it. I'm not insulting you. I did it. I don't. So when I purchase a hundred plus dollar item, which oh by the way they're a lot more than that, and it says apply 30, um, 30 inch square pounds, I mean I reached for this. Was this expensive? I would classify this in the expensive department. But if you have something that does an inch per pound back in your house, you could stick with that. You don't need to purchase this if you already have something like that. All this has is different extension bits and I've only come across needing a Phillips head, T head, and that's it. And make sure you treat it right and release all the tension when you're done with it and keep it up and safe. But you will be reaching for this, I guarantee you. And that product was the Wheeler Fat Wrench. I made sure I shopped around and I wanted to make sure that I got the best price I could, but they're all generally the same amount from all the different locations. The other thing that you might be interested in getting or using, and I say using because you probably have it and you just don't realize it. Little Crow Gunworks, they have a package for your detent spring and set screw that sits on the back of your buffer tube. So what happens is the spring that holds the tension on your rear detent spring, it's placed in there and if you've seen, I'm sure you know what the point I'm talking about is you have to hold it in place while you're putting other things in there. Well, Arrow and a few other companies, they created, or excuse me, they self tapped them from the factory. I don't know why. The other people don't. Uh, they just should. What I went and done and is I purchased from an online retailer, the Little Crow Gunworks, and it comes with it comes with a few uh, set screw spares, and so I bought some extra only because they were a dollar extra. And if they could be lost, I'll lose them, guaranteed. If they could be lost, I'll lose them. So. I did a little bit more digging. I did some more research. I says, how special are these? Really, how special are they? I have a tap and die set, a few of them. I researched arrows and they have the 440. Local hardware store, 440. I looked at the little Crow Gunworks. What size do they do? 632 for this particular one I picked up. Bam, 632. That brings me into a possibility I went online and I purchased about four of these bolt catch threads and I'm going to give it a try for the bolt catch thread tap and die. I'll let you know how that goes, but I'm going to give it a try. Another thing that you're going to want to have is vice grips. Now, if you notice these vice grips, they're taped. I put some black electrical tape on them, nothing fancy, just enough, a couple layers to keep it from scratching. Because if you're holding on to, and you will have no choice, anodized items, whether it be your upper or lower receiver or whatever, you're going to risk scratching it. Because if you scratch it, it eats it, and you make some noticeable marks, and you'll be reaching for one of these super black paint markers I did, or you'll be Cerakoting your item. And that gets expensive the further rabbit hole you go down on. The other thing that part of that group, wrench group would be a pair of needle nose pliers. Hey, grab this from my workbench. I don't need to keep it here on the armor's table. It's a really good pair of needle nose pliers I do for my electrical work. Comes in handy. That's what you're very much interested in. A really good solid pair of needle nose pliers. And you'll find a lot of uses for that. One of them being holding your roll pins down. The other thing is, moving into the trigger group and trigger housing group is Geisley has a fitting pin, a fitting pin um, tool where it is machined to the exact width and diameter of where your trigger pins go and it helps hold them in place so you can guide those pins in without beating on your receiver too much. 
comes in handy. Do you need this? Oh, hell no, you don't need this. Does it help? It's helped me. It's helped me. And going and moving along with your trigger and your trigger housing group, you will find that several companies, this one just happens to be from LaRue, this one right here, you can put your new or updated trigger in, you can put your new or updated pistol grip on, whether it be from Hogue or Bravo Company, and you can see how it's going to feel, how it's going to pull for you as many times as you want because you won't break anything because the hammer falls on a hardened piece of polymer without it falling on something else that could break. Whether break the hammer or break the item, the lower receiver. Another tool that is nice to have is some, especially if you're a beginner, because I can't stress enough that what happened to me could happen to you. I was trying to be wise. I read every, I saw every video I could be out there. I, I read as much information as I could on the forums. And then I ordered my very first barrel. Thought I had a wicked good price. It was beautiful. It was the size I wanted. It was the first barrel. I had no worries. It wasn't dimpled. The barrel wasn't dimpled. And then you got to go down that rabbit hole. Do you dimple or do you don't? I figured I would. Well, how do I do that? Again, YouTube and online forums are godsend. I went and picked up a Caw Valley Precision Dimpling Jig. I have had to use it twice. Both times. Both times, dead on, perfect, no issues, self-explanatory. A lot of commercials out there. A lot of videos out there in forums will tell you how to use it. Um, is Caw Valley the only one that makes them? No. This happens to be the one that I picked up. I was a little nervous at first, but it worked out just fine. I am not, I am not upset with purchasing that. It's helped me out twice. Moving right along, talking about sets or kits or whatever. If you are like me and you've done a little bit of work around the house or your shop or whatnot, you already have most likely punches. Regardless of the make, model, and size, you probably have a few punches, whether you use them for nail setting, machine work, or whatever. Well, with the roll pins that we deal with on the AR platforms, you have the bolt catch and you have the trigger guard. Now, I bypass the trigger guard aspect of it because you can buy um, updated ones that are screwing set screws. And I like that a whole lot better, but my first one wasn't. I had to find a way to put that roll pin in successfully without breaking the ears. Punch block came in handy. Bam. And I went and got those tools from Wheeler. And Wheeler has a set of different size punches. They have ones that are purposely made for your bolt catch that are coated, flattened. They are contoured to fit in. One holds the pin in place. The other one helps you pound it in. Make no mistake, you can still scratch. You could still scratch your lower receiver. I have. Look, check out one of my other videos. I did, and I own that fault. It was mine, but if you're careless or not paying attention or not reading ahead, you can most definitely do the same mistake, no matter how much painter's tape you put on it. That I promise you. Always nice to have a fresh roll of painter's tape. Not to mention black electrical tape as well. This also comes with a hammer. Bam! This hammer, it's weighted, it's got the right polymer and brass on the side. This isn't real good for me, I'm not going to lie to you. It doesn't help me out much. Went down to one of my dollar type stores, Harbor Freight type, picked this up. Wicked cheap, came with different heads. One's aluminum, one's copper or brass. The other one is a soft polymer and a hard polymer. But if you already have one of these, most likely you do. When I picked this up and was using it, I realized I got one of these. If you have one, you don't need to buy another one. Don't even, don't even let it cross your mind unless you're trying to build a purpose kit for your armory. And, but that makes sense. The other thing is talking about buying versus if you already have. From Joe Bob Outfitters, I purchased for my first build. Reading the forums, watching the videos, a thing called Aeroshell 64. This is a half ounce. It was relatively inexpensive. Uh, read the forums, being the new guy, you need this for your barrel nut and, and so forth. So, 
here I am, I brought it back, and then when it was here and I opened it and I smelt it, no joke, I says, wait a minute, I, this is anti-seize. By the name of my, um, by the name of the video, so forth, Maine, you know we deal with salt and rust and ice and weathering and machinery, anti-seize. Guarantee you got a tube of this sitting somewhere, because I did. The second I said, wait a minute. They sell that people buy this. If you deal with the, the salt and the freeze and the wintering uh, where you live and rust, I assure you, you probably got some of this anti seize somewhere around here. Aeroshell 64, because it deals with temperature, I want you to mind that part because remember, temperature has a lot to do with it. A whole lot to do with it. Going back into the temperature aspect, this is the medium. This is the medium Loctite. One thing people forget, and it's important to note, certain brands have certain colors. If you have the Loctite brand, they have colors representing certain temperatures. Well, just so happens that this brand here I have called Permatex, they have their own colors representing the strength of their Loctite. This is my medium, although it's blue. Also, something like that is almost invaluable if you are assembling, this is your Lucas Gun Grease, extra duty, extreme duty. Now, I purchased a Lucas Gun Grease. That's a brand. Do you need that brand? No. You can also use your own, you can also use grease of your own. If you have or had to have packed um, bearings in your boat, you would know that type of extreme grease to use as well works just fine. Am I a professional armor and a scientist? No, but I can tell you that would work in a pinch. Have no fear. It would work. But, most importantly, try to stick to something. This says gun grease. I, I went with that. But you could probably use something else as well. And you always want to make sure you have on hand your typical gun oils. CLP, you know, the Winchester brand, Remington brand. Everybody makes their own gun oils. It's up to you to really decide which one you're going to like the best and which one you're not going to like. I, I can't uh, make that decision for you, but I'm sure you by now you understand how important to have oil, a few thick brushes. Uh, I call these AP brushes, all-purpose brushes. Um, these are the polymer teeth. They're not the steel teeth. I wouldn't use the steel teeth. Uh, not in a position to. Another thing that you're going to find that you're going to need on hand you're going to need a pair of tweezers. Uh, don't read into these, but as long as possible, they will help you retrieve small or dislodged items quickly and easier. And if you're an old guy with bad eyes like I do, like I have, a pen flashlight is, no matter how many lights I got around me, it, I always need to get that flashlight to look in up close and see what's going on. I got this pen light as a free gift from USCCA. It's a great organization. It's helped me out. So this is what I used. It's wicked bright. It's some crazy looms. I'm not going to turn it on because it makes the camera flicker. Okay, so right here is your screwdriver multi. So this is just an urn. It's long. It's about 12 inches. You got the, re the heads that you can pick out your different types of Flathead, Phillips, Torque, etc. Most times I use this when I'm starting particular um, bolts on my handguards or the pistol grip, etc. Before I finish it off with a certified torque wrench. Reaching behind me because they're kind of delicate. You got to forgive me. This is also my reloading table. I also do reloading. This here is a caliper. Uh, I know a lot of you have seen this. This is from Frankfurt Arsenal. I picked it up because of reloading and, you know, you want to be dead on accurate with the best equipment you can. You'll find that in order to check or confirm any possible mistakes or upgrades, these right here are invaluable. You've got to have a caliper. I don't even know why a person shouldn't even have a caliper, whether he's working on firearms or not. This comes in handy in so many situations, so... If you're like most normal people, you probably already have one in your toolbox. Break it out, you're going to need it. You may not need it all the time, but when you, there's going to be a time when you're going to need it. 
it's best to have it. The other thing is, is to have a really good vise. This is a multi-purpose vise. It can attach everywhere, spins. This is a uh, Harbor Freight Special. I'm lifting it with one hand so you can tell it's not that heavy. But what matters the most is where you clamp it on, if it stays in place, and what's it going to hold. Because that's going to bring you right down to the last topic I want to cover. Last topic I want to cover is your, is your lower receiver holder that slips into your magazine well. My first purchase I bought was this Magpul. This Magpul, it's heavy, it's strong, it's, it's tough. I, I don't even know what the hell it's made out of, but dang it, if you hit someone with it, it's going to take them down. It also comes with barrel lugs for an upper receiver to do maintenance on. I don't like this. And the reason why I have two is I don't like what this is because it does not fit. If you have a higher end billet or if you have a standard uh, lower billet, they're just, there's too much wiggle room. Could you tape this up? Sure. Could you put a wedge in there? Sure. But why? You bought this. It cost about, what, almost 20 something dollars? It's very, very loose. I do not recommend this. Now, if that's all you have to spend, and if your budget is limited, by all means get this and wrap some tape in it or some slivers of uh, wedge marks if you can, but some shims. But I picked this one up from Real Avid. Again, I picked this up because you can adjust. And the more you adjust, the tighter it fits, the snugger it gets, and bam, it's not going anywhere just by that. It's not going anywhere. I don't even have my magazine release catch on it yet. And it's it's in place. It's not going. Tighten her up. For obvious reasons, you want to be careful how much you tighten it because you may. I don't know. I don't think so. But people have said you could expand it too much and stretch it out. But that, in a sense, just flares your magazine well. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not a professional armor. I'm giving you layman's terms on how it fits. When it came to my LaRue, this, this was so much more stable for me than this was and I had so much work I was doing on this that I just couldn't risk it wobbling around into the vise. So do I still have this? Would I, would I say get it? Yeah, without a doubt. I, this, you know, I had this for a couple builds, no problem. I wrapped some tape around it and found a way to shim it tight. That's a hassle, but it worked. And later on, I got a really good deal. I shopped around and I got that real Advid well magazine block holder and you're going to find that after you build something after you're all said and done you love it you put some rounds through it you're having a good time and you're going to start coveting your neighbor's firearm and you're going to want to upgrade i mean those professional youtubers out there they do a real good job in those reviews they make you want them i, I sit there drooling sometimes and like i'm eating crayons and I don't know. It just makes you want to upgrade everything you got to the next best thing. And that gets expensive. Especially if you don't, because if you don't have the tool for it, you got to get the tool. Now, one thing I did get, I was, I, was, uh, I was warned by a very close friend of mine that to be successful, you need to have some gauges. Well, obviously the firearms I build are 5.56223. And I got the gauges for them. The no... No go, go, and feel gauge. Do I need those personally? Do I need them? Uh, no. But are they a really damn good thing to have, especially if you're troubleshooting, especially if you're not real sure of what you're doing and you just want to be right in the end? Yes. Now here's the other thing I want to talk about, about being right in the end. My very first build I put together, I was slow. I was so excited about it. My local armor, right, you know, from where I live, I got to drive about 40 minutes. But my local armor uh, gun store I went to is called Trident Armory. And I brought it, the lower and the upper receiver, to them, and I paid them for an inspection of my work. I was humble. Um, they worked with me on some of my parts, so they knew what I was doing. They gave me words of advice and caution, and they told me, when it's all said and done, Ben, just bring it to us. Let us look it over. We're going to put our gauges, our torques. Our, we're going to give it to us for a day. We'll put it together and 
we'll go over it with a fine tooth comb and we'll tell you what we did, what you did, and, and if everything turned out. Well, I did that. And I was, I was waiting for a, a beatdown of how bad I was. And they gave it back to me and I saw some of the stuff they went through on it as well. And I didn't do that bad of a job. It, all they all they did, they said in the end, was confirm my torques. Everything else was great. Everything else was great. They just confirmed the torques that they're used to on their um, shop specs. And I wasn't even really off on that. But they couldn't give me the firearm back unless they checked the torques. It's kind of their shop policy, which I appreciated. And they couldn't give me the firearm back unless they felt it was going to fire as well. Which is, you know, insurance or shop policy. So tried in Armory... I work with them for reloading and I work for them for my builds and parts and they're a great bunch of people, veterans and uh, cops, etc. Great, great people. And a lot of my buddies out there have given me a lot of advice as well. Um, never fail to ask questions. Don't get wrapped around the higher end versus bottom end versus low tier. Listen up. I spent 20 years in the Marines and infantry and... I can tell you there wasn't a day that didn't go by that I didn't curse the own firearm that they issued me for crying out loud. Rickety, shakety, um, whatever. So, and I was just a basic Marine infantryman. It wasn't anything special. So, you know, it's really perspective and point of view on what's going to work for you. And you got to do a lot of your own homework. And I wish you guys a lot of luck out there. Please uh, like and share and comment and ask me anything you want to ask me. We here, uh, I tr I'm humble enough to, to wish that you could help me out and give me some guidance because I only become stronger by the more that I learn. I still have to continue on with my LaRue build. That's what's next. But that's a slow go and uh, a very special build to me as we go on. Well, it's uh, Saturday. It's about 20 degrees outside. Uh, Got to finish up with my chores for the day. I wish you guys uh, best of days. Be safe. Semper Fi. And this is Mid Coast Maine. We're out of here.